A week could learn next year if Louisiana must follow a lower court's ruling to include a second majority minority district. Now, part of the argument in the case drew national attention when some state Republicans argued for a more narrow definition of who is considered black and how that could impact who voters sent to Congress. It's an argument that revives a complicated and very ugly part of American history and leaves some to wonder if their voting rights are at stake. One of the freedoms of being an American is deciding who you are. And for Angel Chung Kutno, that identity is not so black and white. I identify as Afro-Asian. My mom is an immigrant from Korea. I'm five generations here in Louisiana, black. I grew up in a pretty black or white town, and so it made it challenging for me and for other people to put me on either side of the line because People like to organize and have boxes that you can fit into. And I also have a pig and goat. They got her here at the school. But for someone like Angel, it's difficult to be put into just one box. I was always having to choose a box, and usually it was called other. And so I just became familiarized with that box, even though it feels very otherizing to say, you know, you don't fit in anything else. You're something else that we can't identify. Now the case for which box Angel chooses is up for debate in the country's highest court, where there's a battle brewing over Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. And it all traces back to how congressional district lines are drawn in two states, Alabama and Louisiana. In Louisiana, there's only one majority black district out of six, though the state's black population is 33 percent. The Legislative Black Caucus fought to change that during the special legislative redistricting session. And there is absolutely no reason for our black voters to be packed into a single congressional district. Jared Evans is a voting rights attorney with the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. He's followed every step of the redistricting process in Louisiana. Seven different alternative maps were presented in the special legislative legislative session. He says two majority minority districts should be drawn, one in the New Orleans area and his second one stretching from Baton Rouge to Monroe. Yes. And Governor John Bell Edwards agreed. He vetoed the maps in early March. There are several maps that actually would comply with the Voting Rights Act and with the court's order, so hopefully they'll be able to bring themselves to do that. But the legislature wasted no time in overriding that veto, which is a rare occasion in Louisiana. This vote was unique because the only people who would have been impacted were black voters. And somehow, miraculously, um, the, the legislature found the will to override the governor. Evans immediately filed suit claiming the 2022 congressional maps diluted black voting strength in violation of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. In a trial court ruling, U.S. District Court Judge Shelley Dick instructed the legislature to go back to the drawing board in an effort to draw a map with an additional majority black congressional district. And if the legislature couldn't draw its own, Judge Dick would. The back and forth between state legislators made its way to the U.S. Supreme Court, whose conservative justices issued a last-minute stay, keeping district lines as they were, just as Judge Dick was set to enact new maps to carve out a second-majority-minority district. Part of the argument that drew national attention to both cases was the standard of blackness, or rather, who gets to identify as black. In Robinson v. Arduin, Attorney General Jeff Landry argued for a more narrow definition of black and how that definition can be used in Section 2 of voting rights cases. In court documents, Landry advocates the use of what he calls DOJ black, namely, those who are black and those who are black and white. Our argument to the court is that anyone who checks black should be identified as black in terms of drawing a new map, right? The argument of the Secretary of State and the Attorney General is that, that that's too broad of a definition, that you cannot be considered black unless that is your only race. It feels like someone else is trying to impose their power on my voice to say that my identity can't be one that I choose. Now, the renewed call for a more limited definition of blackness brings back America's complicated history of how being black was defined. Louisiana had a law at one time that said if you were 132nd African blood, you were classified by the state as black. And that law was on the books to enforce the strict racial segregation and, frankly, the oppression of anyone who could possibly even remotely be black. These were more commonly known as the one drop rule. 
mulatto, quadroon, octoroon, colored, negro, black. While the terminology has evolved, the definition is woven into American history, and the social construct has been used in a way to restrict access to, well, anything. May it be political power, home ownership, education, even movie theaters. It was designed to preserve the white hegemony and, and the white power structure that has been in place. And now they're trying to flip that around, but basically for the same reason. Because there are many, many people going back generations, especially here in New Orleans and in the Cajun parishes, who not only identify as black, but who have been identified as black, going back to their birth records. Given that history, it can be hard for multiracial Americans to fall along one color line. According to political analyst and Gambit columnist Clancy Dubose, power is the name of the game. We have a situation where 33% of Louisiana's voting age population is identified on state records and they identify themselves as black. Under this ruling, that could go down potentially to 25 or even 20%. It is very, very important when you talk about the representation and of black people and in terms of giving people a voice in the affairs of their government. The Selma marches were organized to protest voting discrimination against black people. The impact, sometimes violent, sometimes deadly, became a pivotal point in the civil rights movement. Not long after, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965. When the Voting Rights uh, Act was passed, we had to deal with the Ku Klux Klan. We had to deal with the Grandfather Clause. You can vote if your grandfather voted. Wait a minute, my grandfather couldn't vote? But now you're telling me I can only vote if he voted or a literacy test. They'll ask you questions. Willie Zanders is a civil rights advocate and attorney. So this whole thing about voting is just part of that American exper experiment that has failed in the past, and those rights were taken from most of us. Zanders says the business of defining blackness in modern day America is not one he or anyone should want to be in. Louisiana has a list of problems from one to 99, and that's not one of them. But possibly curtailing the black vote by further gutting the 1965 Voting Rights Act should be top of mind. This Voting Rights Act has sections. Each section is intended to do something different. Sections put in place to ensure every American the right to vote, which Professor Angela Bell says is a right that is under assault. This is an issue of power that always has been a part of the discussion of freedom. So when we free people, will they be powerless or will they be equal to us and hold some power? So now Republicans are saying, listen, uh, if you check other boxes, then you should not be considered black. And the motivation, of course, is to go back to the original intent from Reconstruction of who all of this legislation was to apply to. And depending on who you ask, those freedoms are at stake when the high court issues its decision sometime next year. In trying to make me not feel different, you unknowingly denied my difference. For some, the debate poses a threat, not only to their political voice, but to their very identity. Knowing that people see that there is power in my identity and they want to harness it for their purposes and not for mine and to use it against me is really harmful. Well, we attempted to ask the Secretary of State about the argument on which definition of black should be used in Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act cases. Uh, his communications team told me, quote, this is a technical legal question for the court to decide, and as an agency, we don't comment on ongoing litigation. Well, the court is set to decide on the Alabama redistricting case sometime next spring. That Louisiana decision should come soon after.